And I am not an electrician, but I have learned a lot of stuff lately about how your house is wired so that it doesn't kill you. Disclaimer. For those of you who are already familiar with home electrical wiring, don't even bother. Just skip past this video. Now this is a basic outlet that you're going to have in most homes. It's called a duplex outlet because there's two. Now the smaller hole on the right side is called the hot wire. That's where the power actually comes into the appliance from the circuit breaker box. That's the one that you don't want your children to stick a paper clip into. The one on the left side is the neutral wire. That's the bigger side. That takes the power back from the appliance back to the circuit breaker box. This bottom one down here is the grounding wire and I'll get to why that one's important in just a minute. And now for something completely different. A very, very basic and rudimentary example of how power gets to the outlet in your house using my daughter's Snap Circuits Junior Kit. The power comes out of the circuit breaker box through the hot wire all the way to the outlet in a wall in a room. Let's say you have a lamp plugged in in that room. If you switch the light on, the energy is allowed to pass from the outlet into the lamp lighting up the light bulb. Then the leftover energy, whatever's not used by the bulb, is returned back to the wall outlet and then back down to the circuit breaker box through the neutral wire. These outlets here with the buttons on them are called GFCI or Ground Fault Circuit Interrupter Outlets. Try saying that three times fast. And they're primarily used in areas uh, in your house uh, that have access to water like bathrooms, kitchens, the outside of your house where it could rain. They monitor the current going from hot to neutral through the appliance and if there's an unusually low amount of current going back through the neutral line to the circuit breaker box, it causes this button to pop out and the power shuts down. So let's say you're blow drying your hair and all of a sudden this button pops out. <sighs> and it's irritating, right? But this GFCI outlet could have just saved your life. Now we all know that water and electricity do not mix because water is such a good electrical conductor. If you get that hair dryer wet, or maybe the hot wires on the inside get wet, you've got wet hands, maybe you, maybe the plug was a little bit wet. That extra energy is gonna to try to find its way to the ground in the shortest way possible, and that could be through you. These little guys are installed to monitor that level of energy that's going back in and make sure it's appropriate. And if it's not, it can read it in 1 13th of a second. So that's why it pops off. It pops off before that electricity electrocutes you. Now, sometimes you'll have another outlet in the kitchen or the bathroom that looks like a regular outlet, but it's actually connected to the GFCI outlet that's also in the same room. This one actually still has the sticker on it. I don't know why we left that on there for 15 years. So this one will actually have the same safety as the one on the other side of the sink. Okay, so why is it that some plugs only have the hot and the neutral wire and others have an additional grounding wire? This little third grounding plug exists as an added safety measure for these. The grounding wire is added in devices that are encased in metal or that the power source is encased in metal. It could be a refrigerator, could be a microwave, could be your computer. In this case, this is this little uh, grinder we've got going on back here. Very much like the neutral wire. It takes the excess energy left over from the use of your appliance back to the original source. The reason being, if the hot wire should come loose on the inside of the device and connect with some of the metal on the inside, you are going to get the shock of a lifetime and it won't be pleasant. But with the grounding wire here, it will take the excess energy back to the source, to the ground essentially, instead of sending it through you. You most definitely don't want to be a part of that circuit. Now what is the deal with the dryer plug and why does it look so different from every other plug? Gas closed dryers operate off of a standard 120 volt power outlet but electric clothes dryers need 240 volts, which is why it has its own dedicated outlet that looks a little different. Uh, you'll notice on your circuit breaker box, uh, the dryer will have multiple circuits dedicated to it. Um, the only one that has more is your heating and air conditioning. Incidentally, the thing that eats up the most energy in your house is your air conditioner, which is why your bills are so high in the summer. But the next thing after that is your dryer. One really quick side note about dryers, Dryer plugs can be different based on where you live and when your house was built, which is why the plug is always sold separately with dryers. So when you go to buy a new dryer, make sure you're getting the right kind of plug. Maybe take a picture of the outlet so you know you're getting the right thing. Oh, Dad, gun it! So what the heck just happened there? Well, the circuit breaker tripped. But why? 
Typically when a circuit breaker trips, it's simply that that circuit is being overused. You may have two rooms in your house that are on the same circuit. Maybe they have an adjacent wall. You're working away and then all of a sudden somebody turns on a hairdryer in the next room and everything goes In that case, you just need to be thinking about how much energy you're utilizing out of that particular circuit and just start plugging things in in a different place. Now, a much more rare but much more dangerous situation is if you have a short circuit or a ground fault going on in that outlet. Short circuits and ground faults are very similar. In the case of a short circuit, the hot wire inside of the outlet is somehow coming into contact with the neutral wire. In the case of a ground fault, the hot wire is coming into contact with the ground wire. Both of those situations can cause a fire in your home. So if moving the location of where you have things plugged in doesn't fix the problem, you're definitely going to want to crack that baby open and take a look, see if you see anything singed or touching that shouldn't be touching, or just call an electrician. So I hope some of you homeowners out there found this enlightening, maybe a little bit helpful. This has been Jig Fix. I'll see you again next time. Oh yeah. Oh yeah.